Hi guys, welcome to this Money Control live stream. You're watching Morning Trade with me, Nandita Khemka. Tuesday morning, lots of cues coming out of global markets, encouraging cues. Gift Nifty hinting at a start of that 19,800 mark. Lots of stocks to watch out for today, including the likes of HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance and a lot of other stocks that will be on my radar on the show. Uh, so keep watching and of course, if you have any queries, send them in to us on our YouTube feed and we will try and take them up with our technical expert on the show. But before we go any further, as usual, take a look at the top headlines at this hour. Wall Street ends sharply higher despite rising 10-year yields. Investors await earnings from the likes of Bank of America and Goldman Sachs later today. Asian markets kickstart the day on a strong footing. Gift Nifty hinting at a start above that 19,800 mark. Brent cools off slightly from the $90 per barrel mark on expectations of a deal between the US and Venezuela to ease sanctions on oil exports. Higher crude prices, in fact, weighed on the rupee yesterday as it ended at a record low of 83.28 to the dollar. HDFC Bank reports a mixed set of numbers for the second quarter. Profit beats estimates but NII comes in a tad below expectations as cost of funds rises. This is the bank's first earnings report after the big merger with HDFC. Among key earnings to track today, Bajaj Finance could report a 30% jump in second quarter a profit on a YOI basis. However, higher cost of funds may dent margins. Also, watch out for earnings from the likes of LNT Technologies and ICICI Prudential. Also on the show today, we put the spotlight on Geo Financial as profit doubles on a QOQ basis. Seat and Godrich Properties will also be on the radar. Well, uh, you know, uh, let's first bring on board our technical expert for today. Joining me is Sachitanand Uttekar, uh, who's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the VP uh, Technicals and Derivatives at Tradebull Securities. Uh, great to have you on the show, Sachitanand. As usual, uh, uh, you know, yesterday we did show some bit of resilience around that 19,750 mark. It was a range-bound session. We ended flat this morning. The queues are fairly positive. 19,800 is what we are looking at when it comes to the gift nifty. But today, it's a, it's a fin nifty expiry as well. Uh, so, uh, how, what are the kind of levels you'll be watching out for on the index? Do you think 19,800 can sustain in today's session? And secondly, levels to watch out for on Fin Nifty as the expiry is today. Uh, good morning, Namita. Namita, clearly, I think uh, yesterday we saw a very strong rain bound uh, session. Uh, Nifty formed a spinning top doji kind of formation, which basically indicates indecisiveness. But if you uh, you know look at the entire trend structure, uh, I think it was just a pause before the uh, next leg of momentum, and probably we may see uh, Nifty you know uh, concluding its day above that uh, nineteen thousand eight forty mark. Uh, wherein uh, you know it has been uh, facing some supply pressure, so probably you know this is a day uh, wherein we may see that particular breakout getting established. Uh, especially if you look at uh, the data uh, of Nifty Bank, you know forty four thousand five hundred has been a supply zone, and uh, with the with the, the uh, uh, HDFC Bank's weightage, probably we may see uh, you know that particular level also getting breached. So we may see a very strong sustainable rally uh, throughout the day. Uh, we are optimistic on the market uh, from a broader perspective until unless we don't see nifty you know escalating lower below 19,540 from here on i think the trajectory for this particular uh monthly expiry remains positive till 20,100 so we are expecting that uh, uh once this particular breakout gets gets established at 19,840 we may see some strong uh, directional momentum play getting active in the market so Right now, you know, uh, it's better to uh, stay on the long side, uh, keep trailing your stop losses higher. And for the day, we may see uh, Nifty establishing a close bill above 19,840. And eventually, we may see this particular rally getting unfolded towards 20,000, 20,100. All right, uh, 20,000, 20,100 is where, uh, you know, we are headed from here. But with that, uh, Sachinathan, hold that thought. We'll come back and talk to you about specific stocks as well. But let me also bring on board, uh, you know, Ketav Shah, who's the lead BFSI analyst at Anand Rati Institutional Equities, who's joining in this morning. And, uh, you know, we'll be talking about HDFC Bank and, of course, Bajaj Finance and what are the expectations there. Uh, great to have you on the show, Ketav. Uh, you know, my first question to you, of course, on HDFC Bank's quarterly performance Net profit, 50% growth of the merged entity. Uh, you know, the street is uh, fairly confused about this number. What is your own assessment? Uh, how <coughs> would you be reading into the profit figures uh, for the merged entity? 
Uh, so historically, whenever HDFC Bank has undergone uh, any previous mergers, uh, it's, it's done a lot of mergers over the last 20 years, you see some base effect coming in for about a couple of quarters. And post that, you will see earnings improve a bit. Uh, since this was the first quarter, there were a, a lot of uh, confusion around uh, what will be the final uh, ROA uh, model for the bank. I think over the next couple of quarters, when things streamline for the bank, you'll see the numbers improving. Um, in terms of expectations for us for this quarter, the numbers were slightly below at the core operating profit level. Uh, however, Pat was in line, of course, because of a uh, very robust uh, asset quality and a very benign uh, credit cost. Of course, tax was also lower during this quarter. Right. So, uh, uh, are you convinced with the 50% profit growth figure? Uh, that's my question to you. Uh, you know, according to uh, uh, some market experts, uh, you know, perhaps this does not really reflect the true picture. Uh, what would you like to say to that? Uh, so, if you look at uh, the adjusted numbers and you compare like to like uh, both combined, then the profit growth is not this high. Yeah, of course. Right. Uh, on the margin front, 3.4% uh, of total assets. Uh, of course, this figure would have been higher, uh, uh, you know, if the, if the merger impact hadn't been there. Uh, but would you say that the, uh, uh, you know, the impact of the merger has played out in this quarter, at least in, uh, in terms of margins? Or do you think the pressure will sustain for the next uh, or perhaps the second half of the current fiscal? We'll wait for one more quarter before we can uh, kind of say that uh, the, the margins are back on track. Uh, the environment is as such that the uh, that there's some competitiveness in the deposit space. Uh, but let it play out for one more quarter. I, I see. All right. Uh, you know, in terms of your outlook on the stock, has anything changed post the numbers? And uh, you know, uh, given the fact that ROA has been maintained at two percent, uh, would you say the risk reward uh, is uh, you know looking favorable at this juncture? So we have a hold on the stock. We think that let the reorientation and the harmonization phase get over for a couple of quarters. That's when we'll relook at the stock. Right. Uh, you know, let's also talk about uh, you know the management commentary. Any key takeaways from there? Given the fact that you know uh, uh, CEO Shashidhar Jagdishan has said that you know the bank is poised for a strong growth going forward. Uh, of course, uh, the street was anticipating some bit of pain in the books, uh, uh, given the fact or uh, given the impact of the merger. But you know, cross-selling benefits and you know, long-term uh, uh, benefits of the merger far outweigh near-term challenges, right? Uh, so, any key takeaway coming in from the management commentary post the earnings the declaration? I think what stood out to me was uh, the management's confidence on the fact that uh, the synergies will start playing out. Uh, they have been able to engage the HDFC customers far more. Uh, on a qualitative basis, the uh, after-sales service, the cross-sales service has improved a lot. So, so, so these are heartening things. Uh, the second um, uh, thing that really stood out to me was that the management is very confident that the retail credit cycle uh, is still very healthy. Um, I think uh, th these are two big takeaways for me from the call. call. All right. In terms of earnings estimate, uh, you know, for the next uh, two fiscal, say FY25 and FY26, would you retain your forecast or would you, uh, you know, uh, perhaps uh, 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 trim it a bit or would you uh, increase it? How would you look at it? The, 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 uh, uh, so, we have so far retained the, the earning estimates. All right. Let's talk about Bajaj Finance. Uh, you know, that's uh, the uh, other big one from the NBFC space that will be reporting its earnings. 30% profit growth is what the street is penciling in. And... Uh, uh, margins could see some bit of a pressure on the back of higher cost of funds. Uh, in your uh, own assessment, uh, uh, how would you or uh, what is your expectation when it comes to Bajaj Finance? Uh, I think these, these numbers are very similar to what we are expecting. Uh, apart from this, you also expect a very benign asset quality environment. So, credit costs should also be pretty, uh, should improve from the first quarter levels. Right. Uh, so they have, uh, uh, you know, recently announced a fundraise, you know, of some around 10,000 crore rupees, wherein 8,800 crores via, will be raised via QIP and the rest via preferential allotment to Bajaj Finserv. Uh, so in terms of uh, the uh, uh, fund utilization, uh, any thoughts there or anything that you'll be watching out for uh, from the outlook post earnings? Um, yes, we'll be looking at two things. Number one, uh, I believe the management wants to uh, reduce the cross-cycle, uh, cross-year leverage. Uh, so, if they were raising capital, say for example, hypothetically at six times leverage of their book, they'll probably uh, want to stick to five times. Number two is the growth outlook slightly better. 
than than what they have indicated. So of course, if you realize, number one that uh, they guided for doubling of their loan book by FI twenty five. um and they they are actually pretty far ahead of uh, those trend line numbers right you know we also had geo financial reported earnings yesterday uh, strong growth uh, you know coming in on a quarter 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 basis of course first earnings post listing uh, you know there are uh, competition concerns when it comes to bajaj finance uh, uh, you know and uh, uh, how do you think the competition or you know how do you think this entire uh, competitive landscape will pan out now that uh, Uh, Geo Financial, of course, is looking to enter into various segments: insurance, AMC. Uh, you know, uh, so I mean, how do you think this entire landscape will pan out going forward? Uh, so, a, if uh, my belief is that Geo has got got into this market, it means that the market size is really huge. It kind of establishes what we have been saying uh, that uh, Indian financial markets uh, will drive the Indian economy over the next decade. uh that's number one number two uh, what we uh, see is that uh geo is uh, more in the formation phase uh let it kind of uh, you know uh, mention its strategy uh, strategize along how they're going to be in what segments target segments it's going to be and then perhaps take a call on the competitive landscape All right, uh, uh, mm-hmm. that's the view then uh, on the you know on HDFC Bank on the NBFC space. Uh, Kethav, thanks a lot for uh, uh, taking out time and sharing your insights with us. So we look forward to touching base with you sometime soon and discuss other uh, earnings from the financial space. But uh, with that, uh, let's also go back to Sachita Nand and talk about specific stocks. Uh, DV's Lab, uh, uh, Sachita Nand, I want to talk to you about this stock. Uh, yesterday, of course, it was. Uh, one of the top losers uh, on the index and uh, you know uh, if you talk about uh, uh, you know some of the queries that are trickling in this morning this is one uh, uh, query that has come in from uh, sai kumari and wants to know uh, you know the target price to watch out for on this stock going forward but divis i think uh, has dominated the losers list uh, from time to time on the nifty uh, how, what are the kind of targets one should be watching out for in case they uh, you know they hold or they have some holding in this stock the stock has been consolidating i would say uh, you know it has been uh, oscillating within the range of 3800 on the higher side and uh, 3600 3650 on the lower side has been a dependable support so i think uh, this particular consolidation may continue uh, from a uh, from a trend perspective uh, the only uh, level that uh, could distort this entire structure or the momentum is uh, placed somewhere close to around 3540 so until unless uh, the stock trends uh, above this particular level uh, uh, there's a good possibility that uh, we may see a uh, resumption of the up move soon uh, if you look at uh, the daily charts uh, it has been uh, forming a kind of a uh, you know a, 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 a channel formation Uh, the declining channel, with, which has a support uh, well established somewhere close to around thirty six hundred, so I think that will be a good level wherein uh, some long positions can be committed. Uh, stop losses should be placed at around thirty five forty on a weekly closing basis, and uh, eventually, uh, you know, in couple of months, uh, we are expecting that uh, the stock uh, should scale towards thirty nine fifty. All right, thirty nine fifty are the are the kind of levels, or is the kind of level to watch out for on DV's lab. uh let's talk about a ciet now uh, sajita nand uh great set of numbers multi jump uh, multi fold jump in profit on a yy basis revenue has grown in single digits although uh, operating numbers have been strong on the back of uh, easing input costs stock has done well on a ytd basis on a six month basis but over the last one month or so it has fizzled out a bit uh, do you think uh, uh, we could see a resumption of the up move given the fact that numbers have been fairly strong we have a we have a query coming in uh, from uh, debu k on uh, this particular stock uh, so how should one approach it uh, poised for great up move going forward uh difficult to com- comment actually if you look at uh, uh, the recent performance for the last 3 months uh, you know the stock has been gradually uh, trending lower uh, though it has you know managed to sustain above its uh, 20 week exponential moving average plus its uh, 200 day exponential moving average is placed somewhere close to around 2000 levels itself so i think uh, we may see this grinding move getting continued but from a trend perspective uh, the reversal may only set in once the stock uh, starts trending above that 20 to 50 mark uh, which has been its uh, recent uh, you know swing high zone 
So until unless uh, we don't see that particular thing happening, we may see this grinding move getting continued, and probably uh, the stock may you know uh, scale lower towards 2019-60 kind of support. But uh, if you look at uh, uh, the entire structure, we've already seen a very strong rally uh, from April 2023 when it formed a base somewhere close to around 1400 uh, till 2700, 2600, 2650. You know, post that uh, it did not see a very strong meaningful correction. The last three months, you know, that particular correction is in motion, and uh, we may, uh, you know, uh, see uh, the resumption of the up move once the stock starts trending, trending about 2250, 2240. So I think it's better to avoid any fresh aggressive long positions here. Uh, review the stock somewhere close to around 2000 levels, or else uh, buy this particular stock on a breakout about 2240. All right, watch out for a breakout above 2240 and you, then you can look at buying the stock. But let's talk about an NMDC. This stock has been in a steady uptrend. Uh, uh, Sajita Nandu, the last five sessions, I think it has already gained 14 to 15 percent or thereabouts. Perched at a 52 week high, time to chase momentum in the stock uh, because we have a query coming in from Naveen. Wants to know your thoughts on this. Uh, well, we continue uh, with a a positive bias on the metals pack and uh, from that particular space you know this particular stock has been uh, uh, trending uh, with a go good amount of relative strength so even right now uh, you know uh, the base that uh, it has formed at around 150 you know that base looks very strong so on an immediate basis even if we uh, look at a correction coming in uh, that correction may not uh, extend beyond 155 zone so I think it's a good healthy trend. A buy and decline uh, strategy is also suitable here. We recently saw it, uh, you know, sustaining and breaking above its uh, 200 monthly exponential moving average, which was placed somewhere close to around 135. And uh, that particular breakout has activated a inverse head and shoulder formation on its monthly scale, which is indicating a price target somewhere close to around 425. So from a broader perspective, uh, uh, the, the reward to risk opportunity still looks brilliant. Stop losses should be placed at around 146 on a weekly closing basis for an upside uh, target, which is available till around 220. All right, uh, that's the view on NMDC, a bullish call coming in there. Uh, but let's let's take up the next query. This one is coming in from uh, Maheshwar Bhanu K, and he wants to know your thoughts on two pharma stocks and whether or not uh, you know it's worth holding them in the portfolio or not. First one is Gland Pharma. And the second one is Pfizer. Both the stocks has have been in a downtrend over the last month or so. Uh, even if they've done fairly okayish on a YTT basis, I think over the last one month they have uh, come under uh, some bit of a selling pressure. Uh, Maheshwar wants to know if it's worth holding holding these stocks uh, in the portfolio for the medium term for about twenty percent upside. Do you think that's possible? Uh, for Gland Pharma, the the trend remains weak. Uh, we have already seen a good pullback rally here. Uh, but again, unfortunately, you know, we have seen uh, signs of distribution. The 1800 uh, mark looks uh, very strong as a hurdle. So unless we don't see uh, the prices again scaling higher, the probability of a, a down move towards 1200 remains open. So it's better to, you know, exit long positions when it comes to Gland Pharma. But Pfizer, I think, uh, you know, he can expect uh, some more consolidation here. Uh, for the last three months, you know, the stock has managed to sustain above its uh, uh, five-week uh, month uh, monthly exponential moving average, which is placed somewhere close to around uh, 3800, 3840. So that looks like a dependable base. So even if the stock starts, uh, you know, escalating lower, probably he can uh, accumulate uh, more around that particular level of around 3800. Uh, but it, when it looks uh, comes to Pfizer, the probability of a 20% looks brighter. So I think if he can hold on to Pfizer, add on to his positions on a decline up to 3800. But when it comes to Gland, uh, I think it's better to exit. All right. When it comes to Gland, it's better to exit. But uh, Pfizer is something that you can hold on to. Uh, but uh, let's uh, shift focus and talk about a Goodrich Properties. Now, uh, this talk is in focus today given the fact that, you know, of course, yesterday we had news flow that it has got a GST notice of somewhere around 48 crore rupees or thereabouts. And uh, yesterday, uh, post-markets, uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, some bit of news coming in that Sidco has uh, cancelled or issued a cancellation order for two of its plots uh, that it was allocated uh, in Navi, Mumbai. 
uh, but uh, you know the company has said that the cancellation uh, is uh, you know on untenable grounds it is you know defying bombay high court's uh, may 3rd order and that uh, it won't really have any kind of material impact on the financial or operations of the company uh, and it will of course be challenging uh, the order before the bombay high court uh, godrej properties i think it was under pressure yesterday uh, this morning as well we have a query coming in on this talk uh, you know uh, uh, given the fact that we have negative news flow surrounding this stock should one continue to hold on to it or uh, you know look to exit uh, on rallies abhishek das has this query i would recommend uh, buying this particular counter in fact uh, recently we saw it breaking out from a symmetrical triangle formation and uh, the pattern target is uh, place uh, uh, almost around 19 1900 1930 uh the recent development has been also good after that particular breakout at around 1640 levels uh, you know we saw a very strong momentum uh getting continued towards uh, 1760 and post that we have seen a very gradual correction here so even if uh, you know the stock uh, starts uh, you know falling uh, towards 1640 1660 levels again i think it will be a good opportunity to uh, add on to long positions uh, from a trend perspective uh, you know there is no uh, uh, signs of any uh, you know distortion or uh, uh, a change in momentum so probably we may see you know this particular stock uh, again surprising on the upside so it's better to add on to positions on a decline up to 1640 the stop loss for the trade should be placed uh, at around 1605 on a weekly closing basis uh, we are expecting that uh, eventually the stock may scale towards 1840 to 1940 levels All right, eighteen forty to nineteen forty is the kind of levels to watch out for. And buy on dips should be the strategy on Goodrich properties. Hope that answers your query. But uh, let's take up the next one. This one is coming in from Nivedita De, and she wants to know your thoughts on BGR Energy. Now, this stock uh, saw some bit of a profit booking yesterday, but over the last five sessions, it has uh, you know managed to amass sixteen percent kind of gains uh, uh, on the charts. In fact, it did hit a fresh fifty-two week high as well. Uh, uh, what's the strategy here, uh, Sachidanand? BGR Energy. well uh, the volumes have been very inconsistent so it's better to you know uh, uh, keep trailing your stop losses higher i would not recommend uh, adding on to a, any fresh long positions here but uh, since she is already holding the counter uh, probably she can maintain a stop loss somewhere close to around 72 on a weekly closing basis and in case uh, if that little level is breached uh, i would recommend an exit All right, uh, that's the view. Then uh, recommending an exit there. But uh, the next query is coming in, coming in on Venus Remedies. Raj uh, wants to know your thoughts on this talk. I think this talk was up quite a bit yesterday on the back of approval for uh, some cancer drugs, right? So uh, somebody holding this talk must have already made uh, quite a bit of a profit yesterday. Uh, would you advise booking some profits, or would you say hold on to it? Up twenty percent yesterday. well even here the volumes are very inconsistent so it's better to you know keep trailing your stop losses higher uh, from a price perspective uh, you know the, the stock uh, did display a very strong consolidation uh, somewhere close to around 220 zone so i think that will be an ideal level wherein uh, you know fresh stop losses can be placed on the higher side uh, the moment we see this particular stock you know scaling about 300 levels uh, we may see uh, this particular pullback getting extended towards 420 415 kind of a zone from a long term perspective i think it uh, uh, remains uh, well positioned uh, but the problem is that uh, the volumes are very inconsistent here so it's better to you know uh, uh, book partial profits uh, somewhere close to around 300 zone and keep trailing your stop losses higher so as of now the base looks very confident at around 230 225 zone so one can uh, keep uh, the fresh stop losses uh, near to that particular zone itself All right. Hope that answers your query. But we have time uh, for just about one more query, and this one is coming in from Prashant. Who wants to know whether it's the right time to enter into a Kalyan Jewelers? Uh, what would you advise him? Because the stock has seen a fair bit of uh, up move, uh, uh, and we also have the uh, festive season upon us. So should one buy it now? I think it is better to uh, you know accumulate this particular stock on a decline. Uh, every now and then we've seen a surge in the prices. You know. it has followed with a decent correction so i think the base uh, for this counter is placed somewhere close to around 250 so i would not rather uh, you know chase momentum here we've already seen a very strong rally from the levels of around 200 
So on a decline towards 250 would be an ideal zone when the stock can be accumulated. All right, that's the view on the stock. Uh, but you know, I'm afraid we've come to the end of the query segment with that. Uh, but before I let you go, Sajitanand, anything that you're flagging off for our viewers uh, this morning? Uh, Narita, clearly uh, the focus remains on buying. And yesterday we saw very strong momentum in some of the metal pack. Uh, the global scenario looks uh, dependable, wherein uh, some positions uh, can be added when it comes to nifty metals and uh, related stocks. So, JSW Steel has been on our radar. Yesterday, we saw a very strong price action there. It's a 5 and 20 crossover, probably indicating further momentum play, in uh, which could be witnessed today. So, we are expecting this particular move to extend towards 808. And that's why we are recommending building long position here in JSW Steel, keeping a stop loss close to around 782. The second stock uh, which we have recommended to our clients is Havels Limited. The stock was consolidating uh, near to that 1400 levels. Yesterday we saw very strong uh, breakout. Uh, probably this particular breakout was led by short covering. We are expecting that uh, there could be fresh momentum here today. Uh, the anticipated target is placed somewhere close to around 1445. Even here we are recommending building long positions, keeping a stop loss at around 1405. And the last one is uh, UPL. Yesterday we saw some of the uh, chemical stocks, uh, especially on the fertilizer side, uh, are doing well. Uh, UPL is showing some signs of reversal here. On the 60 minute scale, it's a covenantal formation breakout. Uh, the price pattern target is placed somewhere close to around 645. And even here, uh, we are recommending long positions with a stop loss at around 625. All right, JSW Steel, Havels and UPL, uh, stock recommendations coming in from Sachitanan this morning. With that, uh, uh, Sachitanan, thanks a lot for taking out time and joining in and, of course, sharing your thoughts okay. on so many stocks with us. But uh, with that, we've come to the end of this edition of Morning Trade, completely timed out. So from me and the entire team, thanks a lot for tuning in. But uh, don't go anywhere because coming up next is opening bell.